Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dale POV and welcome back to another week of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Diamonds Unbreakable Part 4. Um, yes, we get the conclusion to the Red Hot Chili Pepper fight. Now, just to get the overview done with, because there's um, there are a couple of things I do want to talk about, uh, a couple of four things. Um, I, let me just get with, done with the overview. Uh, so, the episode just starts off with... The whole gang, and um, by that I mean Jotaro, Okuyasu, uh, Koishi, and of course Josuke waiting by a harbor where jo Jotaro informs them that Joseph will be arriving by, by boat. And they're basically making their battle strategy towards Red Hot Chili Pepper. Jotaro, Jotaro tells everyone else that Red Hot, Chili, uh, Red Hot Chili Pepper is there and that they need to... Think of a plan, basically. Some, some like a pair is gonna go by boat and and visit and just head over to Yosef to make sure that she's safe, um, while he's still on the boat, on his boat, in in his boat, excuse me. And the other pair is gonna stay by the harbor and they're going to await Red Hot Chili Pepper, uh, where they will strike at them. Now, Jotaro also makes a really good guess, saying that. He will be using a, a remote control plane to try and and head over there as soon as possible. Koichi brings up a fact about like a, re, a remote control plane being faster than a than a boat. Uh, so whatever. The plan is that Jotaro and Okuyasu will be heading there by boat, and Koichi and and Josuke will be staying by the harbor and await Red Hot Chili Pepper. Once Jotaro leaves. Then we get introduced to our villain, the stand user Akira Otoishi, and he reveals his face, which um <laughs> I don't know man, like this has to be one of the most random designs to be honest. I mean okay, if we weren't getting that little bit of foreshadowing that Akira is not the main villain that he's just this big villain for now, then, I mean, then it would have been a little bit disappointing, a little bit weird to have him as a final villain. Let's just say that. On top of that, the fact that he's still a high schooler and that he's like this a little bit goofy gives this really like less less of a menacing feel than, than you would otherwise have. And it also makes his stand a little bit more understandable because if you give this overpowered stand to a really smart villain, then shit's going to go down and people will be dying. So having just Akira, having this little bit, this mellowed down evil guy is understandable for plot reasons because he, any any more smarter, any bit stronger any more any more evil then he could have been a serious ass issue for Jotaro for or Josuke for or home or home um, town so that aside and his appearance of being this rock star dude aside okay I liked how they portrayed him um, I enjoyed him in the manga I enjoyed him in this episode um, it's just his whole style his whole Talking is perfect, great. Um, so then, Akira basically warns warns uh, Josuke and Koichi that he will cut his limb off or like defeat Josuke the same way that he defeated Okuyasu last time using his his pinky. And they get into a fight where Josuke understands and clearly sees that he's being overpowered by 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 Red Hot Chili Pepper because he's using all the electricity from the city, and to which he brings an interesting point up. Furthermore, emphasizing what I was mentioning earlier, that if he wished he could use the, all the electricity in, of the entire city and he would be overflowing with power, but he just doesn't do it. So. They get into this fight goes into two phases. The first phase would be the one where they're fighting on on like um, using where Akira is using the the holes in the ground uh, t 
which have some some wires running through them and he uses that to teleport from place to place making it basically impossible for Josuke to see where he's going to be and and in making it impossible for Josuke to predict where he's going to be Red Hot Chili Pepper using the power of electricity of course acts razor fast at the speed of light and Josuke uses his time just like and this is a more of a pattern that Josuke does and that is using his environment and using Crazy Diamond to his advantage he uses Crazy Diamond's destructive power every time he tries to land a blow he makes sure he breaks something around him and when shit goes down Koichi notices that Josuke that 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 the ground is has turned a little the asphalt has turned a, has liquefied a little bit which makes which um, when electricity flows through it, it conducts some some sparks, and that way Koichi at least can em- emphasize where he's going to be next or where he's coming from, and gives Josuke the heads up to basically bash Red Hot Chili Pepper Skull in. Next up, the second phase of the fight is basically just Red Hot Chili Pepper giving heavy blows to Josuke, Josuke flying over to a car. Red Hot Chili Pepper heading over to deal the finishing blow. Josuke entraps him in rubbers from the destroyed car, the the wheels. He entraps him in the in the in the tire. And Red Hot Chili Pepper tells him like this is not like if this was like a meter tick, maybe then you could have stopped me, but this is not gonna hold me back. He makes a hole through it, but a tire having air in it, it expands all the air which in my opinion was a little bit off it as well because i understand crazy diamond's ability of being able to put things back to the way they were but does that also in, in like imply that he can put air back where it was in the past because i believe you need to fill it with a certain gas in order for like to be for, in order for the tire to be pumped up Otherwise, if he makes a hole through it, there's not like all that air that got loose all of a sudden is going to be all of a sudden pressurized in that tire again, right? Which was a little bit off for me. So that basically sends Red Hot Chili Pepper flying to the water. His stand starts breaking apart because water, the, the sea has salt in it and that uh, helps electricity conduct everywhere in the water, which basically... To put it in simple terms, it tears it tears um, the um, the hole of the electricity that Red Hot Chili Pepper has, and it spreads it all around the sea, um, in a way also ter- tearing Red Hot Chili Pepper apart. Akira is is stuck there like a statue, to which we switch over to Okuyasu in the boat already, heading over to meet Mister Joseph Josar, who is played well. I love him so much him being just like the sweet kind of old guy who mishears things and forgets things uh it's gonna be a little bit fun to see him this season this upcoming season so really looking forward to that and they play into something that i absolutely love and that is okuyasu him being a dumbass but they play it to the point where oh a, a guy from the speed Wine foundation comes in warns them about uh warns Okuyasu about the enemy being on board because Josuke turns around he finds out that Akira's not there anymore and Akira by this time managed to swim to the boat which can seem problematic like how the fuck does he get there so fast but it's worth keeping in mind that that there was a point where they where Josuke and Koichi completely were convinced that they defeated Red Hot Chili Pepper that he was not going to do anything anymore and so there was a time span that the boat was also coming towards them so the distance in a way also shortens and Akira didn't have to swim as much back to the point speed riding foundation guy is over here Um, Akira is is over here Okuyasu in the middle standing next to Joseph Joestar Akira is ready to kill Joseph Uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers coming right from above him and Okuyasu not understanding who of the two is going to be who who of the two is a bad guy because he hasn't seen Akira's face before 
he just luckily beats Akira down to the pulp. And when Akira told, tells him, like, how do you know it was me? Like, Okuyasu said, I was going to hit you both anyway. Playing really well into his character, putting a little bit of an understandable threat because, like, it's very normal that if, if, like, if you are warned about, hey, like, there's this bad asshole coming to you, and, um, but they don't tell you how he looks, and then all of a sudden you're, like, in a, in, like, in a, in a bank, and then, like, one guy tells you, like, hey, like, that asshole's coming to you, and then another guy comes to you and, and tells you the same, same thing, exact same thing, you don't know who's who, right? So I love the way they, like, Okuyasu was put in that situation and how it kind of got resolved quickly. And now, we get a little bit of a soft moment between Joseph and old man Joseph. Basically, just uh, uh, Joseph's cr- uh, cane breaking and uh, and uh, and uh, and Josuke helping him out, helping him walk, telling him like, "Hey, grab my hand." And Okuyasu, f- like, feeling proud, like he like that he thought of something like, "Hey, I know." Like. He could just use Crazy Diamond to fix this cane, and okay, she's like, "No, don't, don't you understand what's going on? Like they're just having some fathery time." And that's a little bit this one of the small issues that I had with the episode, and that is just that that little moment felt a little bit forced in there. I know that it was in the manga as well, but I didn't feel like it had enough time to develop like that ah oh, moment. Like that, oh my god, like look at them together. I didn't feel that it got developed enough or prepared enough to the point where I actually felt something. I, um, it felt a little bit flaccid at the moment. Now, there are a couple things that I do want to go into regarding this episode. First of all, Jotaro being the Deus Ex Machina. I repeat myself so many times and I will say it every friggin' episode that it happens because it's a little bit bothersome. Even even after reading the manga, like it's still a little bit bothersome. It's just the fact that he, Jotaro could basically be solving a lot of problems. So, the plan was to have Jotaro and Okuyasu go to the boat, and have Josuke and Koishi stay on shore. Now, what's the issue here? The issue is that Jotaro has a time stop ability, and if he really wanted to stop. Red Hot Chili Pepper, he could have been the one to stay on the shore with Koichi and have Josuke and Okuyasu go by boat to the to the boat to meet Joseph, and he could have easily given them a picture of Joseph to know like this is the old guy I'm talking about. So when Red Hot Chili Pepper shows up, and and Koichi like notices him or some shit like that, then Jotaro could have stopped him like time stop and straight up beat his ass maybe red hot chili pepper is stronger but at the same time all he really needs to do is choke him by the neck or and make him not stop him from moving that's all he needs to do that's one of the issues that i have second issue um would have been koichi yelling the yelling the entire time during the josuke fight like him just I don't know. It's it's an issue that I have with with anime girls, um, and anime like and anime like uh, weaklings in general. And that is that small guy or that weak guy or the weak girl who yells like, "Oh no! Like I cannot believe it! Like you cannot see him! Like we cannot anticipate his movement! Like shut the fuck up! <laughs> shut the fuck up and and focus." I understand it's made to give the person dialogue to create suspension, but after a while it becomes it becomes a little bit irritating. That's my issue with the Koichi was a little bit frustrating this episode, just the entire yelling during that fight. Like, bitch, I can see what's going on, you don't have to tell me. In the manga maybe it was a little bit unclear and maybe we need a little we need a little bit more clarification but I sure it didn't work out too well. Now another issue that I've had was the whole reasoning for Joseph coming to meet up with them. The original reason was because Joseph has a purple hermit so he can he could have identified the stand user but we know who the stand user is. Eventually Joseph may become relevant 
Like as you can, as this is no spoiler, but you we've been getting foreshadowed that there is another villain in the series, and he may come in handy to to bring that villain out. But the original purpose was to have him to have him search out who Akira is, and we got Akira already. So what's his, what's the point of him be technically lo- logically for Joshua, what is the point of Joseph, of Joseph being there right now? Maybe they want to seek out maybe they want to seek out um other stand users. Maybe that's why they're they're they have him over there but the original purpose was to search Akira's face out which he showed himself already in this episode. Now, one moment that I did enjoy, and, and I'm, tr- I'm trying not to be biased with this because he's one of my favorite characters, um, and that is the Okuyasu moment, and that is Okuyasu being put in this situation, this forced situation where he has to pick between the two, and in my head, I was thinking this already, like, why not just punch both of them, and Okuyasu said to himself, like, I was going to punch both of you anyway, so I'm happy that at least to that point the situation got cleared out, and that was at least a logical response. A little bit weird having Okuyasu being the one who has to be logical here, but anyway, regardless, aside from the, from those bothersome little points let's talk about the three points that i enjoy talking about animation pacing and value to the overall plot animation on point pretty much completely perfect absolutely loved it pacing this is a good a great example of a perfectly paced episode you get an introduction you get the battle you get the resolve and everything goes well paced i guess the only the only issue that i would say would have been the forced the forced moment between Joseph and Josuke that I wasn't too crazy about otherwise perfectly paced value to the overall plot I would say that meh I guess Akira is finished so we know that that he's done with we get I guess a small preview to our nice villain the like that chopped off hand and Joseph is there that's pretty much as much as as we're gonna get to the as much progress as we're getting to the to the overall plots for this episode. Now, I did mention last last week that that the series is going to run for thirty nine episodes, and how I was a little bit worried, seeing how I believe that that uh, Diamond is Unbreakable is a little bit longer than Stardust Crusaders, and Stardust Crusaders needed forty three episodes to get finished. And that, even then, like the deal fight felt a little bit rushed. So it was a little bit of a concern. However, I also remember that last last part, part three, was also rumored to be 23 episodes at first, but then got, got extended upon. So hopefully, maybe we get four seasons, even though four seasons is quite a lot. Maybe we get four seasons of, of part four, Diamond is Unbreakable. Who knows? Regardless to say, I enjoyed this episode. Aside from the little bit of nitpick and the little bit of issues that I had, my name is DLPOV. If you agreed with what I had to say, please hit the like button down below. If you disagree with what I had to say, like feel free to dislike this video. Comment down below what you thought about it. What do you think about the issues that I brought up? Did you find other issues in this in this episode? I would highly, much likely appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. I apologize for putting this video a day late i had some other issues i needed to take care of yesterday evening regardless my name is the pov i will be i want you to stay in put like for you berserk fans I'm, i have a berserk video planned for later on today so uh, thank you very much for watching thank you for your time and enjoy your weekend and i'll see you guys next week for the last episode of this season goodbye